It's likely that you spent much of 2020 either wearing PPE, talking about it, or suffering a lack of it. But how much do you actually know about protective equipment? Well, protective equipment is not new. Centuries back, it was used by blacksmiths, soldiers, knights, and miners. But when it came to health, it took some time until humans realized the connection between protective gear and disease transmission. From ancient times up until approximately 1818, scientists and medical communities both in Europe and in China believed the so-called miasma theory. What is the miasma theory? Well, according to this theory, diseases such as cholera, chlamydia, and the Black Plague are caused by a toxic form of bad air. They also called it night air. Now, plague doctors who visited patients at the time tried to protect themselves, and they used a special form of equipment which consisted of a fabric overcoat, a mask with glass eye opening, and a beak-shaped nose. They would stuff this beak with herbs, spices such as mint, cloves, and roses to protect the doctors from the bad air. Now, of course, fortunately, the miasma theory was replaced by the germ theory in the late 19th century. And I guess you all know Semmelweis and Pasteur. And if not, I would encourage you to go back to the second episode where we talk about Pasteur and Semmelweis. But the bottom line is, these innovations led the medical community to thoroughly understand through nature of epidemiology and recognize that the pathogens are the cause for infections. Masks and gloves were commonplace in the early 20th century. But only after 1950, healthcare workers began to wear what we consider protective equipment. So compared to the ancient times, we must be very, very happy that we have this equipment. We are much better protected. But wearing PP alone will not give you 100% security that you will not get infected. You also have to know how to wear the protective equipment and how to doff and on, how to dress and undress. And this is exactly what we're going to show you in the following demonstration. Seeing as incorrect handling of PPE may lead to hazardous consequences, it is important to follow the correct sequence of donning and doffing to ensure your gear serves its purpose. Remove all jewelry and accessories before getting started and tie back your hair if needed. Take a moment to ensure you have all PPE components available. A recommended complete kit should include a disposable isolation gown, an additional plastic apron in case the gown is not water resistant, alcohol hand rub, gloves in the appropriate size with long cuffs, goggles, a face shield, a surgical cap, and a mask for respiratory protection, FFP2 or 3. Before donning, disinfect your hands with an alcohol-based sanitizer thoroughly for at least 20 seconds, completing the following six steps. First, rub your hands palm to palm. With interlaced fingers, rub your right palm on your left dorsum and vice versa. Next, rub your palms against each other, again with interlaced fingers. Fourth, clean the back of your fingers by rubbing them in the opposite palm. Grab your thumb in the opposite hand and rotate both sides. Lastly, rub your fingertips in the palm of your opposing hand. Make sure your hands are kept wet during the entire time. Next, 
Don the isolation gown, fastening the waist and neckties with the assistance of a colleague when possible. In case your gown is not fully water resistant, wear an additional plastic apron. If you have glasses, remove them and prepare to wear the respiratory protection mask. Position one strap above the ears and the other at the back of your neck. Mold the nose piece to fit your face. Make sure the mask is flat against your cheeks, checking for leaks by breathing in and out strongly while placing your hands above and below the mask. Do not enter the work area if your mask is not fitted properly. At this stage, you may put your glasses back on. Next, put on the surgical cap. Those with neck coverage are recommended. Make sure your hair is fully covered and proceed to the goggles and face shield. The face shield should cover your face and chin completely. Finally, wear two pairs of non-sterile gloves ensuring they completely cover the cuffs of the gown. Now that you are fully donned, have a colleague double check your protection if possible. Is your gown securely tied? Is the mask fitted correctly? Is the visure in position? And do the gloves cover your cuffs? If you don't have a buddy to check you, you can use a mirror to see for yourself. When doffing, make sure you do so in a designated area. First, perform at least 20 seconds of hand disinfection with both pairs of gloves on. Remove your first layer of gloves carefully without touching its inner rim. Next, remove the gown carefully to avoid producing aerosols. Disinfect the remaining pair of gloves before removing the plastic apron by rolling it inside out. Again, disinfect your gloves for at least 20 seconds. Then, untie the neck and waist ties of your gown. Remove the gown carefully. Strictly avoid touching its inner surface. Roll the gown inside out and discharge of it in a designated bin. Peel off the last pair of gloves and disinfect your hands for at least 20 seconds.
proceed to remove the face shield, touching only the elastic strap and lifting it up with both hands while your head is in sniffing position. Place it in the bin or save it for reprocessing. Then remove the goggles without touching their front surface. Be careful not to touch your face. Put them in the bin and save for reprocessing. Repeat hand disinfection for at least 20 seconds. Bend forward slightly as you untie the knot in your surgical cap and remove it carefully. Repeat hand disinfection for at least 20 seconds. Finally, leave the contaminated room. Once you're out, repeat hand disinfection. Carefully remove the mask, touching the elastic straps only. Do not touch its outer surface. Dispose of the mask in the bin and disinfect your hands for at least 20 seconds. Now that your PPE is fully removed, wash your hands with soap and water. These strict measurements are only required when you're in contact with patients who are COVID-19 positive, or when there's a high likelihood of infection. In other words, when you're performing aerosol generating measures such as airway management. But there are also situations in which you can be affected when you're dealing with patients who have not yet been confirmed to be COVID-19 positive, where you simply do not know if they're infected or not. If you are a diagnostic imaging professional, make sure both you and your patient are wearing masks if available. You might also use plexiglass shields when you're dealing with patients. Such shields can also be used when imaging but remember to only perform ultrasound when absolutely necessary, keeping the examination short. And of course, don't forget to disinfect your probe. For more details, we encourage you to watch episode two. In conclusion, evaluate each situation individually to determine which level of protection you need, which form of protective equipment you should wear. Be aware that especially doffing and donning is very, very important. You have to know how it's performed and you need to, of course, practice. And then finally, wash your hands and don't forget about social distancing. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. You got something out of it. Please share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. I hope to see you in the next and last episode. We were as diligent as possible in providing accurate facts for this video. As the data on the pandemic keeps updating, we recommend staying informed through reliable and credible sources on a daily basis.